So you could pause and read that. I'm talking to Robin. Okay, so number two, you're given two different acidic acids. They both have the same concentration. One conducts very well, one conducts poorly. Which one will have a lower pH? Explain. Okay? So I kind of just, I like to draw a little diagram saying, okay, here's A and here's B. They both have the same concentration. This one has high conductivity, this one has low. So I said A would have a lower pH, meaning that it is more acidic. The acid has a greater affinity to ionize. Therefore, even if it has the same concentration as solution B, there is greater hydronium ions in A than in B. So then you could even, like for awesomeness, if, and if you don't have this in there, I would encourage you to do so. You could say then that A is a strong acid, probably, you know, based on the information we're given. So, now I haven't showed you how to do this yet, so maybe look and see. I'm just saying like HA is representing kind of like a generic acid. It doesn't matter what it is, but every acid will have an H and like a conjugate base or like something else that's negative, okay? Plus H2O makes H3O plus plus A negative. So this is just kind of representing any type of polyatomic ion or negative ion. See that? And I use a straight arrow representing strong. Now for this one, I have HB plus H2O equilibrium arrow, H3O plus plus B minus. Okay. Again, just the B representing any type of negative ion or po negative polyatomic ion. Any questions with that one? Okay. Number three is kind of similar, but I ask you several questions to kind of get you to part C. So what's the difference between a strong diluted base and a strong concentrated base? Well, a strong diluted base, the base has a large affinity to dissociate. This is really kind of important diction to use because you want to explain that the base will go to making OHs easily, but the way you describe that, and I want you to use this diction, so if you didn't have it written in, write this down exactly. The strong base has a large affinity to dissociate. The, the base, the strong base has a large affinity to dissociate, meaning that it really wants to dissociate. <clears throat> so that's going to make the hydroxide ions, because dissociating is making that ions from an ionic compound. So therefore, even though there's a small amount of base, because it's diluted, the base that is present will dissociate 100% because it's strong. A strong concentrated base will also dissociate about 100%, but there is much more present, therefore the OH concentration in the solution will be greater. So both are ionizing 100%, but the difference with the concentrated is that there's just more to begin with. Any questions with that one? Next, what's the difference between a weak diluted and weak concentrated? So a weak diluted, it doesn't fully ionize and not a large amount of base is in the solution. Weak concentrated, it also doesn't fully ionize, but more base amount is, in the, is dissolved in a way, if you think about it that way, is dissolved in the solution. So it could have a higher pH due to more hydroxide ions. Would you be able to figure out which one is which? So because either you're not, like from our original question, you're told you have two basic solutions. One is concentrated and one is diluted. One is strong and one is weak. You don't know which one is strong, which one is weak, which one is concentrated, and which one's diluted. So you can actually figure this one out, okay? If you just measured the pH, you wouldn't be able to know. Because a strong diluted base can have the same pH as a weak concentrated base. 
because you're measuring hydroxide ions. So if you have a lot, a lot. So say, remember when we originally talked about this? If you have, say, vinegar, but it's really, really, really concentrated, it could be the same pH measure as, say, HCl that is really, really, really diluted. Okay, so you can't, you, if you just measured the pH, you wouldn't be able to make any more conclusions than just looking at it. You, you can't. <clears throat> and then the last one, number four. I don't really know what I meant by part A. What did you guys put for 4A? Speaking now. Uh, for weak bases, we use an arrow. Oh, okay. Yeah? That's fine. I don't really know what I meant by a... I just said a weak base. I, I was thinking maybe like solute per solution. So it's like low hydroxide ions per like all the sol vent, which is water. Strong base is high hydroxide ions per uh, the water. But what I really want you to, to focus on is B. Modified a radius. So if I look at a strong base, remember the way that we could tell if it was a strong base is that it has OH in it. Okay? So it'd be like B represents any positive ion, and then it always has OH in it. That's how we told if it was a strong base or not. With strong acids, you have the list, but with strong bases, if it has that OH, you know that's a strong base. So then it just straight dissociates into its cation, so whatever cation this is, and a hydroxide ion. A weak base, however, because that's our modified Arrhenius, is explaining these bases that don't have an OH in it. So if I just think about B, base, plus water, gives me equilibrium arrows, because it's weak, and makes hydroxide ions plus BH+, plus, because it's like an H- um, from the water got attached to the B there. I have a question about the equilibrium arrows. Yep. It's like we didn't use those when we were doing these questions. Very good. So do we have to use them? Yes, yes. Because, because now I, I taught you the equilibrium arrows. So what we really should do is we should go back to question or to page four. Yeah, let's go back to page four. And let's Let's modify our answer. So I'm glad you brought that up, actually. So, um, which in hindsight, we maybe should have saved those um, questions for after I taught that to you. So go back to page 14, or what did I say, page 14? Mm, page 4, sorry, not 14. So here, so say, um, let's modify any of our arrows that need that modification. So HI, would this be a straight arrow or an equilibrium arrow? How do I tell? That's right, yeah. So we just can leave it as a straight arrow because it is a strong acid. Yeah, okay. How about HOCl? What should that be? That would be 
That's right. So let's change that so that because now that we know more about strong and weak, we can change that one. So now what about H3PO4? All and so all of these would need to be equal. So four, this one was um, a base. So first, you would have just the Na2SO4, just straight dissociating. This one you can have as one arrow. But then when you take the base, or the, the negative ion, plus H2O, that's when you have your double arrows, because it's not a strong base, so that one, yeah, your equilibrium arrows. Okay, um, how about, so the same thing with this one, you have to dissociate it first, and that one can be a straight arrow, but then when you take that negative ion, It's a weak base, so you have to double arrow it, or equilibrium arrow. Number six will be a straight arrow because it has the OH in it, so it's a strong base. Hydrochloric acid, is that a strong acid? Yes, yeah, so this is a strong acid, so just one arrow. What about acetic acid? No, this one will need a double arrow or an equilibrium because it's a weak acid. How about hydrofluoric acid? <coughs> yeah, it would need an equilibrium because it's not in the top six. How about nitric acid? <coughs> yeah, just the one because it's the strong. Um, sodium hydroxide. Oh, I don't know why it's there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, yeah, we'll just need the one arrow because it has the hydroxide in it. Sodium carbonate. You'll need to dissociate it first. Okay. To your Na plus. And CO3 2 minus. And then you take that negative ion and you'll need the equilibrium arrow. And then for the next one, too. Yeah. Um, sulfurous acid is it strong or weak? Weak. So this one will also need equilibrium. So, yeah, good. Thank you for asking about that. I think in the future I'll save those questions for after lesson three.